In this video, we will discuss the problem overlapping intervals. The problem says that we'll be given an array and the ith element of the array will tell us about the starting of the ith interval and the ending of the ith interval. The task is to merge all the overlapping intervals. Previously, this question has been asked in companies like Google and Microsoft. So let's have a quick look at the test cases that have been given here. So basically, if you look at the very first test case, that is, if you look at the very first test case, that is 1, 3, then after that we have got uh, 2, 4, then after that we have got 6, 8, and then we have got 9 and 10. So if you see this particular test case here, so we have to merge all the overlapping intervals. Now you can obviously see that if we draw all these intervals on the number line, then 1 and 3 and 2 and 4, these intervals are definitely clashing with each other. These intervals are overlapping. Then after this, if you will see next also, so then 6 and 8 are not overlapping with any interval and 9 and 10 are not overlapping with any interval. So there is only one pair of intervals that are overlapping with each other. So for these two intervals, we'll merge them and we'll write 1 comma 4 and the rest of the answer would be 6 comma 8 and 9 comma 10. So initially we were given how many intervals? 4 intervals. After merging, we have got only 3 intervals. Okay. Now what will happen here is, uh, let's say if we have the second test case. So let's say if we have got... Uh, like 1 comma 5 i'm writing them in the sorted order of the starting so that i can iterate from left to right order for the intervals so that the checking is much easier now after that if i write 2 comma 4 here then we will write what 4 comma 6 here and then after that we'll write what we'll write 7 comma 8 as well so if you see the thing is that equality will also be considered for overlapping because if this interval is ending at 4 another interval is starting at 4 so this will be considered as an overlap as well in this particular problem now what will happen here is if you can see so all these three intervals can be said that they are overlapping because 1 and 5 it is overlapping with uh, 2 and 3 as well as with 4 and 5. So overall these three intervals are overlapping. So that is why what we can say is that instead of these three intervals, we can simply write one single interval that is 1 comma 6. So we can take the starting as 1 only and the ending will be taken as the maximum which is nothing but 6. So we'll take 6 here. Okay, then after that the next interval is 7 comma 8 which is not overlapping with any of the other existing intervals. So the final answer would be 1 comma 6 and then 7 comma 8. How can we solve this particular question? For solving this particular question, there can be many approaches. First and the simple approach is that with respect to a particular interval, we check its overlapping with the rest of the intervals. Okay, now this is very brute force because what I'm saying is if I am at a particular, let's say, ith interval, so I check it uh, with all the other intervals. If it is overlapping with all the other intervals or not, if it is overlapping, then I take care of that overlap and after that I give one combined interval. Okay, now if I do this for a particular index, that would take order of n time. Since I'll be doing it for all the i indexes, so that would take n square because for one index, it's like I'm iterating the rest of the n minus 1 interval, so the time complexity would be order of n but uh, since I have n indexes so this would take order of n squared time here so let's see how we can uh, do it let us say that uh, if we have got this particular question that is we have got 1 comma 4 here then after that we have got what we have got uh, sorry we have got 1 comma 3 here so I'm sorting uh, the uh, given intervals on the basis of the starting time so that we can iterate easily from the left to right order and we can uh, get a feeling of number line where the very first interval is having the least starting and then we keep on moving forward now if you see we will do what we'll write 2 comma 4 here then we'll write 6 comma 8 again and then we'll write what 9 comma 10 here now what will happen here is initially in our result uh, like initially what will happen is we'll be at this particular interval here at the moment we are at this particular interval so we'll start our j index from the next one so if you see currently the starting is what the starting is one okay so we'll say that the start is what the start for this particular interval is 1 and the end for this particular interval is what 3 now we'll check it starting from the next so we'll start a j variable uh, which will be indicating the next in intervals and will be here now when we are at this particular interval you can observe that uh, this interval is overlapping with the previous interval because if you see if you see my starting is 1 ending is 3 and this interval has got starting lesser than the ending so that is why this interval will overlap so now i'll update my endpoint to what endpoint would be updated to 4 because it's like i'm merging these two but uh, i'll not merge them directly i'll just update my end to 4 and i'll look at the rest of the intervals also for this particular ith interval now when my j will move forward it will be at 6 comma 8 it does not overlap so no worries when my j will move forward it will be at this particular interval it does not overlap 
so no worries and we can simply say that the start and the ending is 1,4 for the overlapping interval here and we can simply update it in the result so now what will happen is after this my uh, result will get updated with 1,4 because this is the very first merger that I found out when I was iterating for this particular interval here so what will happen here is in my result we will simply update one interval that is nothing but 1,4 now the moment I go to the next interval I see that this inter like this interval is 2,4 and currently I'm having 1,4 already in my result. So this means that I can skip this particular next ith interval that is 2,4 because uh, because it has been already processed during the overlap checking. Okay, so then we'll move forward now here and we can skip this interval because simply it is already stored in our answer in overlapped condition. Uh, okay, then we'll go to this particular interval. Now for this interval, we'll check the rest of the intervals also. Now when I check the rest of the interval, so you can observe that this particular uh, interval uh, will not overlap with any other interval. So the starting and the ending would be the same. So after the iterations are over, we'll update it uh, as 6,8 in the result. Okay, then what will happen is next time when my I will be at the last interval here, this one, so when we'll check there is no overlap obviously so 9,8 will also be updated in the answer so the thing uh, sorry 9,10 will be updated now you can observe that for one particular index for one particular ith interval we have to check the rest of them okay so this is taking a lot of time so for one interval for one ith interval we are taking roughly order of n time so for n intervals it would take n square time but this is brute force initially what you will do is a simple approach is to group all the intervals by sorting them according to the starting time for the first uh, uh, inter uh, interval and then compare it with all the other in uh, overlap so basically you will start from a particular ith interval and you compare it with all the others and you check the overlaps and at the end of the day uh, if uh, there is a if the first interval open overlaps with any other interval then uh, remove the remaining other intervals from the list and merge it into the final interval so as i said if there are overlapping intervals so it's like you are merging them okay you are making making one combined single interval uh, okay and you repeat the same process for the remaining of the intervals so as i said already if you had if you were at 1 comma 3 then you check thoroughly and you finally you were finally able to generate 1 comma 4 now since you have generated 1 comma 4 so when you come across 2 comma 4 this interval so this is uh, already processed because 1 comma 4 is already written in the result so since the result already has an interval which is uh, catering this range which is having this range so then we can skip this particular interval that is what approach says here so this particular approach would take order of n squared time and the space complexity would also be order of n in case if i'm making a new resultant list to store the final answer here so let's have a look at the code here and see what we can do here so basically firstly we'll sort the array according to the starting time here and after that we have a result ready as uh, empty list uh, okay then we have the starting of the ith interval and the ending of the ith interval then after this if what happens is if there is a, if we are at a particular uh, ith interval okay which has been already uh, which has been already processed in the result then we need to continue it okay because if there is a particular interval that is if the last interval that is there the latest interval that was stored in my result okay if it is uh, overlapping with the uh, current ith interval then in that case we can skip uh, processing this particular ith interval because it has already been written in the answer otherwise what we can do is we can start a j loop from i plus one that is from the next interval till the end and we can check that uh, for whichever intervals if the starting time is lesser than equal to the ending time then we need to merge those intervals so we need to keep a track of the ending as the maximum so what does this mean let's say if i had uh, if i had an example like uh, i had one four then i had something like two three okay then i had what i had something like three and six as well suppose if i had this particular test case here you can observe that all these three intervals will merge okay so basically what is going to happen is my start is one End is all end is basically four right now. Then what will happen is when I go to this interval, this interval overlaps. Okay, and if I'll check the maximum ending, so out of uh, four and three, the maximum ending is four only. So I'll not update anything. And after this, we'll go to the next interval. That is this one. Okay, when we check, so the starting is basically lesser than uh, the ending here. So this will also overlap. So we'll update the ending with the maximum of the current ending and the ending for this ith uh, interval. So we'll update it with six here and that's how you can see that the start is one at the end of the day and the uh, end is basically six here so this is what you can observe for the test case here this will be the brute force approach that we can apply but this is taking a lot of time because we are doing a lot of lot of redundant checking so in instead of redundant, uh, redundantly checking we can do what we can check the current interval with the uh, last interval that we have processed already okay so so that 
we don't have to check uh, uh, we, we don't have to check the intervals again and again which have been already processed so let's have a look at that approach also so basically what you can do is you can optimize your approach by just applying sorting so you will not uh, iterate n square times here what you will do is you will focus on iterating only a single time now how will you do that basically you will always check the current interval with the last merged interval in the result now what does that mean initially if you see this test case so we have sorted the uh, test case according to the starting time so that we can iterate easily now in the result what will happen is we'll update the very first interval so that is 1 comma 5 and we'll uh, currently this is the latest interval that we have now currently if suppose that i am at 2 comma 4 if i'm at this interval that is 2 comma 4 does it overlap with the latest interval with the last merge interval yes because the last merge interval is 1 comma 5 so this is ending at 5 but this current interval is start uh, starting at 2 so it overlaps so if it overlaps then i'll check the ending so the ending here is 4 uh, the resultant already has got ending 5 so the last merge interval has got ending 5 so we'll keep 5 with ourselves because the better ending is 5 only we'll take the maximum here then we'll go to the next interval here the moment i go to the next interval what happens is uh, i'll be at this particular interval now when i'm at this particular interval uh, it's 4 comma 6 here now does it over uh, does it overlap yes it does overlap because i've got uh, 5 here as my ending for the last merged interval and i've got 4 as the starting so the uh, ending of the last merged interval is greater than the starting of the current interval so that's why there will be an overlap so the ending will be updated to the maximum of the two endings so out of 6 and 5 what is the maximum 6 so my resultant uh, ending as of now the ending for the last merged interval would be updated as 6 here okay then we'll go to the next interval so now 7 comma 8 will behave as my current interval does it overlap with the last merge interval the last merge interval is 1 comma 6 so the ending is 6 does uh, is it greater than the starting of the current interval 7 comma 8 no so 6 is not uh, greater than 7 so that's why there is no overlap so we can safely put this particular uh, interval as 7 comma 8 in our result and this will be now this will be now considered as the last merge interval in our result then what will happen is when we'll proceed further so we don't have anything so that's why we'll just return this list here so always whenever uh, whenever there is an overlap we'll always update the ending for the last merge interval but if there's a interval if there's a current interval which, which is not overlapping then we'll directly update that in the result so that can be treated as the last merge interval here now the time complexity for this code would be how much if you observe the time complexity for my code would be order of n log n because we'll be obviously sorting basis uh, on the basis of starting time space complexity would be order of n because here what i'm doing is i'm creating a resultant array to generate my answer now let's talk about one more optimization suppose that if you know how to solve this problem using this approach still what you can do is still you can do in place uh, in place merger of the overlapping intervals suppose that if you just had the uh, given uh, interval array so what you can do is you can just manipulate the new result in that array only instead of taking result in for this problem when we'll be finally submitting then we can uh, definitely return resultant array but if the interviewer says that we have to solve this problem without taking another resultant array we can do that also how see this uh, but before that uh, let's have a look at the code for this particular approach also so if you will see here what will happen here is basically initially my uh, array will be sorted on the uh, basis of sort, uh, starting time result will be initially empty then i'll update the very first interval as the uh, latest interval that is merged okay then after that we'll check the last interval from the result and we'll uh, also process the current ith interval that we are at now if the uh, if the current interval if it is having starting less than equal to the ending of the last merge interval so this means there is an overlap so if there is an overlap so the end of the last merge interval would be the maximum maximum of the last merge interval ending comma the current inter intervals ending but if there is no overlap then in that case we'll say that in the result we'll update the current interval as the last merge interval and at the end we'll return the result but like suppose that if we have to do this in place without taking extra resultant array then also we can do it in the given arr array itself what we can do for that is suppose that if we have been given this particular test case 1 5 2 4 4 6 and 7 8 now if we do not take any resultant extra array still we can solve this problem how so you can see here that we will have a Result, result, uh, resultant index is initially standing at 0 and my ith index in, will stand here now ith index will always indicate the current interval now what will happen is since this interval is overlapping so we'll do what we'll update uh, the resultant uh, in uh, interval index with the endings so if you see 
there is an overlap with the ith interval but the ending will still be 5 because out of 5 and 4 uh, 5 is the maximum then we'll proceed further here now what will happen here is then my index will move here now the moment my index moves here 4 comma 6 is standing here now does this interval overlap with my uh, uh, resultant uh, index right now yes it does so this means that there is an overlap here now ending would be updated to the maximum of the two so the ending would be updated as 6 because out of 5 and 6 6 is the maximum so this will be updated as 6 here then we'll do what then we'll go to the next index here that is the next interval now when we are at this particular interval what will happen here is if you will observe this interval does not overlap with the resultant index interval if it does not overlap then we'll say that okay we need to move our result uh, forward and then we'll update 7 comma 8 there okay so this is how you will do it basically see you will you are updating the resultant inter index first of all and then you are updating at the resultant index you are updating the ith interval that was not overlapping so what you will do here is basically uh, you will update uh, you will update your resultant uh, index first so res will move here and then here you will over uh, you will overwrite with the ith interval so 7 comma 8 will be written here and what you will what you can do is basically you can return the result till, the, till this particular index only because if you see you can uh, if you re return the result till this resultant index only uh, that is uh, 1 comma 6 and 7 comma 8 intervals only so they are actually reflecting what they are re reflecting the final merged intervals only so this is how you can do it if the interviewer will ask you that how you can do it without taking extra resultant array but when we will be submitting so since the question is expecting us to return a list uh, of only the resultant uh, final intervals so that is why we'll make a resultant list in this question so let's quickly try to submit the code here so let's uh, so we have written the code let's try and submit this so you can clearly see that my code is getting accepted i hope that you have understood this clearly make sure to mention your uh, understanding in the comments thank you for watching this video